Took you a minute, but welcome back, old friend. It's nice to see you. What's up guys, I Pencil here, and here we are to do a breakdown slash review for chapter 151 of Four Nights of the Up, which is known as Not At All A Tragedy. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long, long time coming. What? What was that? When did the time skip start? It's been a solid, it's been like 30 chapters, ain't it? Not maybe not 30. Hold on, I need to double check. But overall, it's been a minute and a half and it's finally time. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a... Okay, let me not do that. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact. C-I-S. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lay it out cleanly for you. One more time, one more time, one more time. C I S. You may be wondering, pencil man, what's with the random acronyms? We already have to walk. It's already weird enough. What's C I S? It isn't that TV show. No, character induced stupidity. That's the framework for this entire arc. I repeat it one more time. Character induced stupidity. C I S is the framework for this entire arc. Realize this arc would not have happened. <laughs> and especially this chapter's end point and the resurrection of a certain somebody would not have happened without CIS. I will talk about that in a little bit. Because I think sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But just remember, as I go through this review, C. I-S. Character-induced stupidity. But, of course, we open up and we see that King and Nasian's father and child, boom, world <laughs> Like, golly gee willikers. They wombo combo, double team, triple down, super gubber slobber, nigger knocker, crazy, went on world day. <laughs> like, they straight up changed the effects of the spirit spear. Correct me if I'm wrong. And you know what? Maybe this isn't lightning, but like, that looks like electricity. Like, like, when did the spirit spirit have electrical property? I don't know. I genuinely have no clue. But they boom her. <laughs> and you know, don't get me wrong, it definitely makes the most sense to do. Like, obviously World Aid has been a threat for a minute now. It makes absolute sense to hit her with all they've got. But jeez, they really boom her. They boom her so hard, it's not even a boom, it's a foom. <laughs> they annihilate World End. Right? They annihilate World End, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like, though. I don't, I don't blame for believing it. Because they absolutely boom her. And a little detail I love here. I love that we see King being portrayed just slightly higher than Nasians. Ultimately, while Nasians has definitely awakened, while the fairy tree has definitely chose them to some sort of degree, while they're definitely evolved, one, Nakaba keeps forgetting to draw their hair with the new color. Yeah, I ain't kidding. I don't know. What it, I, maybe Nakaba just forgot. Like, Nakaba, you changed. You changed the color of their hair, Nakaba. You can't, you can't just see. I saw it. I saw it at the end of 149. I saw it, Nakaba. I'm not sure how long, maybe, maybe you're just not going to do it, maybe just like this, and I do admit, I think the darker hair does break up Nasian's predominantly white design in the manga more, but I, you did a whole color page with it, lighter, Nakaba. You even mentioned that he's awakened. He didn't go back to sleep, Nakaba. Nakaba. I don't know how long it's going to take, bro, but you're going to have to fix that. But with that being the case, King still, well, not stands, but floats above his eldest child, right? While... The chapter will later go on to talk about how Nasians may have been chosen as the next fairy king. Ultimately, King Harlequin still stands supreme, and I think that's well portrayed by both of them huffing and puffing, but King still being portrayed as higher, above, elevated in comparison to their eldest child. And, of course, we see that, they, like I said, they boomed her. <laughs> like, while the Dragon Ayor is still clearly intact, y'all, y'all, hold on. Yo, those are, those, I think that's her small intestine, bro. <laughs> that's her small and large intestine. They straight tore her in half, question mark? Here's the thing, though. One, I don't know where the spirit spear goes. Like, I'm not sure if this energy is meant to represent it dissipating, because Nasians and King have both run out of magic force. But, like, considering it doesn't, 
it doesn't like boom like no this sounds crazy but if you remember Boskios and chastity fall i'm not sure if dahlia spirit spear ever does this in curse by light but they have this like weird ability we even see it last chapter where they don't just like spear they kind of just turn into massive rays of energy like when the most prominent one I can think of at the top of my head is obviously last chapter, but when Gloxinia throws Boskios at top speed at Demark Meliodas, it doesn't just hit Meliodas. It, like, turns into a massive beam of energy and causes a massive explosion. It just do that for real, for real. But the Spirit Spear still existed after that. I'm not exactly sure where the Spirit Spear went, and I'm not exactly sure how their entrails fell out, but, yeah. World Aim definitely got boomed to oblivion. Should they have lived this... Here's the thing. This is where, once again, the power scaler in me and the character-loving guy in me are in direct, vicious conflict. Like, they are mad. Because the power scaler in me is like, oh. Oh. Oh, okay. So World Dane's like, like, like they're up there. In durability. Like, they, they ain't just take a hit from the true spirit. Like, I already was glazing them for being up there with, like, 4 Command Mael in terms of reaction speed, or beyond 4 Command Mael in terms of reaction speed, by you know, to dodge all of King's true spirit spirit attacks. But, not just that, like, like, durability-wise, like, if y'all remember what true Command Mael was, 4 Command Mael was looking like, he was not looking good. So, for Waldane to survive the combined attack of Nasians and King from a massive boom of the spirit spear that had this level of detonation on impact, mm, also the spirit spear randomly disappearing, mm, but... If there's one thing I'll admit, the character side of me is super duper happy that World Ain't lived. At least for now. We'll see. But the character side of me is super duper happy that they lived because I like World Ain't. I like World Ain't a lot. Not just because of their design. I do, ironically enough, in terms of their, like, armor design. Let me look at Belt Bay again. Let me let me just double. I already have the Natsu the Natsu no Taizai wiki pulled up because I was looking up Troll's age for the live reaction. We can check it over on Patreon for as low as one dollar a month. Or you can remember for as low as three dollars a month to check out the twenty minute live reaction to this very chapter. But let me see. Let me find Beltripe. Beltripe. And I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Oh, oh, he has the clown. Okay, I like the helmet for the clown thing. It's similar to a talisman. I'm not the biggest fan of that. But big booty, just booty butt cheeks. Worldane's knight armor design is probably my least favorite. I like Ironsides and I like Pelguards much, much more. And while I did admittedly really, really like their facial aesthetic design, it's not necessarily that, it's their character that I really, really like. I love their playfulness, I love their manipulation, I love their magical abilities. So I'm happy Worldane lived on like a longevity standpoint. And you know who I'm really interested to see them interact with in terms of our four knights? Go away. Like, come on. Like, like the, the plot writes itself, gosh darn it. A powerful female mage needs to engage with the down bad member of the Four Knights. Like, the, like the, the story writes itself. So I'm happy that they live on that front, but the power scale in me is like, whoa, you are freakishly strong. It's like, especially in comparison, right? Don't get me wrong. This king is clearly nerfed heavily, but it doesn't, like, Nakaba could have solved all of this by just reverting to an earlier spirit spirit design. It doesn't even have to be all the way back to base chassis. Well, I understand why you don't want to go back to that design. Once again, he didn't even go back to Small Wings King design. This is a technically, quote-unquote, new Small Wings King design. It's not as small as they ever were in the original series. Even at the end of the original series, his wings are still larger than they were. But you could have at least gone down to like the second stage. Kind of like with Bond. Like, establishing how Bond was only at one-tenth of his strength and was super-duper casual when he overwhelmed and body-bagged Ironside and Pelgard and his entire crew. But at the same time, maybe the world ain't just meant to be that strong. Once again, I do think Nakaba does care about power scaling to some certain degree. You see that in the Bond fight. He specifically goes out of his way to show that Bond was not a full power. So maybe this is just a way to, like, downscale King? Or, like, something else. Because if I was Nakaba, I would have just gone back to the Awakened Spirit Spear. Like, the one that we see used against the Albion. It can still be first form, it can still do all that. But I would have gone with that. To show that World Dane isn't like this freaky tank beast. Or just to maybe not. Like this either has two implications. Kind of two innately. One, it shows that Bond is just like way, 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 way stronger than King. If you assume all the four peril are meant to be on some sort of similar tiering. Obviously Beltripe is established to be weirdly above. And obviously there are gaps established in there. But we see two four evils go up against a sin. The sin nearly wipes them all. By themselves, by the way, while nerfed to one-tenth of their ability. King gets nerfed to a weaker magic capacity 
and a weaker body, but not necessarily a weaker spear, and nothing's necessarily implied that his output itself dropped, just the amount he can fuel via magic force amounts. And we'll even mention later about the amount of force that characters have used up. So, this tells me that Roldane is just insanely bulky. Like, beyond four coming out my L bulky. Like, nearly true Demon King tier bulky. And we're gonna, we're gonna see, Roldane has some freaky deaky scaling to, like, the deities. I'm, I'm not, it, it isn't just this. So maybe Nakuba's just really doubling down, hammering in the fact that the deities may just not be all that. But, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's keep going. We see that ultimately... CIS is kicking in on numerous levels because suddenly we cut away. Everyone's healed to a certain degree. And notably, Nagaba, hire an assistant, bro. Hire me. I'll do it for free. Okay, I won't do it for free. $2 an hour. But, like, Nagaba, please, I'll ink it everything. But we see that Zillion says, oh, wow. Let's look at your. Well, nope. I thought in the live action. But Let's look works so well. I feel no pain at all. Wow. My cut's kind of just a scab now. You're a genius, Nasians. Oh, no. A genius? Says who? Because I'm in pain from head to toe here. You're right. Can, can, can you do something, please? <laughs> I love the little detail that Six is holding his belly in crap. <laughs> that is adorable, once again. In retrospect, like these, at least relative to their parents, they're like, what, two months old? Like, think about it. I'm trying to I'm trying to scale down their lifespan, relatively speaking. Like, just lifespan-wise. Notably, and then I think about it, though, King and Diane are also really, really young. Because, like, at least from what Nakaba describes in an in interview, apparently Diane's, like, 16? During the run of Seven Sins? Like, modern Seven Sins. She's, like, 16 in terms of giant years. Y'all, she's, like, 700. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Fairies and giants, super frequently long-lived for some reason. So, like, the babies are definitely still babies. And I do love the detail that they do act a little bit like babies. But, of course, they also did have, like, massive gaping holes put in them. So, I can understand the pain and the reaction to that. But we see that Nasian goes on to explain that, Sixtus, Zana, you were both hurt very badly. I put repairing your wounds ahead of easing your pain for now. Why not both? Why couldn't you just use, um... A certain thing. Hmm? 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 Why can't you use a certain thing that is, um, well-established to have worked really well with your ability? Hmm? Hmm? Nauseans. Why don't you use a certain thing? But we see that Nauseans explains. Oh, I use a special medicine that destroys the lesions of death and even recreates missing tissue. I call it Percival. I'm sure the pain is pretty hard to endure, but be patient. Take it as a sign you're alive and well. So that's interesting. That, well, I do, I'm, I'm still leading into the idea that Nazians may get a particular buff by the end of this arc, which will make them broken. But once again, if they aren't allowed to enter Camelot or they enter, end up doing Camelot excursions on their own, disconnected from the rest of the Kuru, I do think ultimately the buff would be balanced. And also because of the question, will Nazians get it? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But that's a pretty crazy love droga. Like, even if it does linger the pain, the fact that you can restore gaping chest wounds, like, it's basically hyper-recovery, but in la droga form. And he can just, they can just make as much of it as they want because of their ability. That's good stuff. But we see that Myrtle reveals, Nauseans, you cured my coughing fit too. Just for now, anyway. Not permanently. So it looks like, and based on what Tiori says here, we'll have to pick more Mullins soon. I'll help you. Once again, she's happy to have her big brother back. But it looks like Nazians may have just recreated the effects of Mullin without, like, actually using Mullin, which is even more impressive. Once again, his their abilities to buff, buff with Serenos Horn, reinforce with whatever Mullin stuff that Nazians can produce, and also heal almost any wound, like, Nazians kind of, they're mainly a support character, but once again, if they get any sort of control over any sort of spirit weapon, heaven forbid the actual spirit spear, even if it's like season one chastity film, Nazians going to be kind of crack, y'all. I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying, don't sleep on them. So sleep on them. But with that being the case, we see that while Nazians is happy, he does start, to, they do start to, sorry, once again, I'm going to be switching back and forth between protons, but they start to wobble. And I don't know what this 
I'm assuming these are guiding lines. Once again, I literally, I'm very non-conventional. Someone once asked me, hey, can you teach me how to draw? I'm like, you do not want to learn how to draw from me. What The way I draw is not normal. I'm a freak with the pencil. Not, whoa, 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 Paul, not now. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm weird with it. Like, I don't, I rarely do guiding lines. Sometimes I do, but not consistently. I'm assuming these are just guiding lines that Nakama does. This one's interesting, though, because it's like, it overlaps with the eye. This one makes more sense as in, like, you draw a line here, 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 you draw a line here. And maybe they just forgot to erase it, or, like, in their haste to ink everything, they just inked those guidelines. I don't know. But, still, that's a pretty weird little detail that that's there. But I do love, once again, King, the worrisome father, checking on their baby. You okay, Nausicaans? Better take time to rest. You just controlled the spirit spirit just after your awakening. That must have consumed a lot of force. Interesting that they keep calling it force. They could they could just call it magic. But, eh, of course, King, being ever the hypocrite, worried about the... And notably, that's a big part of King's character. Worrying so much about the safety and well-being of others. As he's literally... <sighs> and, like, sweating buckets. Because, of course, of course, of course. Come on, that's King, that's King. But we see that Nasians keeps keeps playing a certain, a certain thing. After my... What? Awakening? Fire Emblem? Chrome? Lucina? Smash Brothers? Robin? Okay, sorry. Man. It's been a minute since I played Smash. I had to deal with the patrons and members. I'll have to ask. Anyone, anyone who's a patron member, would y'all be interested in, like... That sounds so weird. Smash Knights? I would need to renew... I think I need to renew my online subscription. I need to practice my Roy. Like, literally everything. I need to practice my sword, too. I need to practice a lot. I haven't touched Smash in a minute. Darn. But, with it being the case, sorry. Completely different tangent. We see that Nasians is, like, awakening? What you mean? I'm, I'm still asleep right now. We see Diane and Tiori smile. They, they know. They know. And Six is just lays it out clear and plain. Ah, too bad, though. I thought I'd be next after Dad. But the Sacred Tree picked you as the fourth Fairy King. <sighs> guess you really are our elder brother. So, before we get into Myrtle's reaction here, I think Sixus is wrong on two fronts. One, I'm not exactly sure that the fairy tree picked Nasians as the fourth king. One, because Nasians didn't get access to their own spirit spear. They only got access to Chastity Fool when King was already nerfed. Nasians only awakened control of it after King's whole biology was shut down and the fairy tree likely sensed that the realm was in danger and went with the next eldest to assist King. Nasians didn't get his own spirit spear. I don't see them developing wings anytime soon. I really don't think Nasians is set up to be the next king, for one. And for two, technically Nasians ain't the elder brother. But I don't think Sixes wouldn't know that, like... They would assume, because, like, Nasians have portrayed themselves as a boy all this time. Like, that's your elder bister. Brother, sister. But we see that Myrtle was like, ah, well, you know what being like that? Wouldn't be like that sometimes. Time to go see if I can find a job. Man, it's been a good run. But ultimately, we see Nasians go, no, no, no. If anyone's your brother here, it's Myrtle. And Nasians gets scolded by Myrtle. He's like, Nasians, you don't have to be polite to me. And Nasian says, no, I'm not being polite to you, Myrtle. You're not worth being polite to, you ugly, filthy, disgusting waste of space of a creature. Actually, I kind of still don't like you after all you've done to me. Obviously, Nasian doesn't say all that. But Nasian says, I'm not, Myrtle. There's no evidence that I'm their son. And Myrtle's like, dude, you look so much like my parents. <laughs> like, it's literally uncanny. To the point where, me, I'm sad that I, it didn't even cross my mind. Like, until this, it never even, like, it wasn't even a thought of a thought. I still remember when Nasians introduced everyone, everyone from their mom was picking up the phones and being like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a Zelda kid. That's a Zelda kid right there. For those who don't know what the Zelda ship is, Zelda's plus Galda. I like calling it Zelda, obviously why, but still, a lot of us, especially because of the whole, the, the biting gimmick, which isn't gone. It's still here. It's just a lot less used by Nakama, thankfully. But looking at it in retrospect, 
kind of it's kind of like ironically enough it's like the Lance reveal like looking at it in retrospect of course it was Lance <laughs> but hey that's why I like Nagaba can always keep me on my toes but with that being the case now see and says so I just resemble them a bit these things happen these <laughs> Nasi essentially says it'd be like that when it'd be like that especially when it'd be like that Myrtle but we see these things happen that's all for me my family's two people Ordo and Dolores. Somewhere in Leonis, Donnie and Anne cringed. No, I'm kidding. But we see that Myrtle's like, oh. And we see that even Shory's like, oh. Because essentially, even Diane, Belt, Zillion, they all are like, oh. Because realistically, Nasin should just accept it. It's like, Nasin themselves admits that, hey, I'm not here to replace Myrtle. Myrtle's still your older brother. He's been here the longest. He helped... Re well, once again, we don't know how the fairy giant family line really went. But presumably, Myrtle, being the eldest child, did help raise the other six to what they are now. So, like, clearly, clearly Myrtle's the eldest. But now, nah, you can still step in, bro. It's okay to extend the family. And, dude, you aren't this dumb. And we see Sixtus and King hear the thoughts of the eldest child. Oh, truly, I'm so glad you're all safe. Mother, father, and my siblings, too. Oh, my heart! Oh, my heart! Oh, my heart! Oh, uh, you know, you know, I'm a cynic. <laughs> Not as like a cynic. I wouldn't say I'm a cynic. Am I, though? <laughs> I would, I would, nah, I wouldn't say I'm like a cynic. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe in, like, oh, everything's sad, everything's dark, everything's negative. But, like, you know, I call myself a realist. Sometimes people call me a pessimist. And on occasion, on occasion, I've been referred to as the Grinch. But my heart, bro, it just grew three sizes this day, dog. Oh, I'm so, ha I'm so happy. Once again, I hope Nazis does end up acknowledging it verbally, cause like that's a that's an important thing to hear. Like, come on, now. come on, now. especially considering how sad it made everyone seeing him deny it like that, seeing them deny it like that. Come on, now. come on, come on, Nazi, come on, and, and just tell him, just tell him. But we see Sixness laugh and. Ultimately, King says, oh, you're such a bad liar. <laughs> he sniffles himself, and Nasin says, like, huh? Don't tell me you were invading my personal autonomy, father. And we see that Tiore and Diane are both annoyed, like, what? Wait, how's that lying? And Diane is like, don't hide things from us, King. And King's like, I'm not hiding anything, even though I very clearly am. But to be fair, like, once again, those are Nasin's internal thoughts. And it'd be, it'd be it, even though I do think Nasin should just accept it and let them know that he... They accept it fully and are actually happy that they are a hundred percent family and that he, they very well know. I can still get it. That's Nasi's own choice to let them know. He'll definitely he'll, he'll tell them eventually. But we see that Myrtle's like, uh, Pops. By the way, Father, how will you go back to your normal self? <laughs> I do love how this is the non-normal one. Basically, every Seven Deadly Sins fan knows King for this. Like, even Full Wings King in the original Seven Deadly Sins is actually treated more like a Demon Mark-esque transformation, which I still think is very strange integration by Nagaba. I, don't, I still don't... I mean, I get it. Once again, King's smaller form is infinitely more iconic than his Full Wing self, but, like, Nagaba, there was no reason that that man revert to an actual weaker form. He was full-grown. He should have let him stay full-grown with Full Wings. He should have just let him be tired. But still... It's funny to see the kids being like, Dad, this is freaky. Go back. Like, I can't imagine what would happen if my dad just randomly turned into, like, a 16-year-old in front of me. I'd be like, Go back. This is strange. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, my dad has not aged. That is my mom. They are both timeless creatures. I love it. Like, like I, I look at pictures of them when I was, like, a baby, and I look at pictures, and I look at them now, and I'm like, Are we... Are we sure I'm not the only one who's aged? Because y'all haven't changed. But I do, once again, I love the pseudo-immortality. But with it being the case, we see King explain, Oh, uh, it's not the sort of thing time will solve, I bet. I let my guard down, yes. But he did sacrifice his life for that curse. Oh, I know, King. Just use La Troca de Yor on yourself. I fear it was likely destroyed with that sorcerer. Oh, uh, well, what will we do? Good question, Diane. I've been happy. I've been positive. You may have even forgotten. C-I-S. Character-induced stupidity. You mean to tell me that King 
one of the most experienced fighters in the entire verse, the entire duology, and not just King, but Diane, another one of the most experienced living fighters in the entire duology, one didn't kill confirm, didn't make sure that one of the Knights of Chaos was got by that attack, and two just didn't bother to check if La Droga de Yor, the most important resource that only spawns every thousand years, was destroyed or not? Y'all just assume? Now, here's the thing. Once again, like I mentioned earlier, just as I talked about CIS, it's a fatal, fatal... I'm not going to say fatal flaw of this arc, but it's, it's something that the arc heavily relies on in order to function. But I can see some sort of excuse, some sort of in-character excuse. Number one, this is likely the first time King and Diane have ever encountered a Chaos Knight. It's been long since established that Roald Dane had to do this super convoluted, crazy connection using Myrtle, using Kilbagon, all as a setup to get into the Fairy Realm in the first place, meaning this is most likely their very first interaction. And once again, considering their at least established dynamic with Nasian so far, it's highly unlikely that Nasian explicitly told them about Chaos Knights and their weird survivability and all the stuff like that. It just feels like a conversation that wouldn't come up. So there's that, for one. And for two, they are definitely extremely worried about their children. Like, remember, before the cut in this point in the manga, they are all under the assumption that Sixtus... Uh, all their kids, really, except for, like, Nasians them, themselves are, like, really on the... Nasians and Teori and Myrtle themselves are, like, all on the verge of getting executed. But, like, at the same time, like, can kind of excuse not going to KC. I do think it's actually kind of insane that they don't even check on the Droga de Yor. It's not like this is some willy-nilly resource that they can just kind of remake. They didn't They didn't give it to Nasians yet. Once Nasians gets their lips all over that bad boy, then... Man, it's a... It's a spammable resource that we can use as we blank. But until then, realistically, that is one of, if not the most valuable thing in the entire Fairy King's Forest that could simultaneously solve all of your problems. Wife hurt? Drew La Droga de Yor. Curse? La Droga de Yor. Child hurt? La Droga de Yor. Like, you should have checked. I'll be real. What happens at the end of this chapter would not have happened if the characters were smarter. But once again, I and while I can infer as much as I want about why the characters wouldn't, based on how La Droga de Yor has been established and based on how it could literally solve every single problem that they were worried about in this chapter before that cut, and based on Nasian's own experience with the Chaos Knights, I think the CIS is kind of insane. I, I can't fully excuse it. It, once again, it, it is character-induced stupidity, and you can always find some way. And in fact, I encourage you guys in the comment section to find a way to rationalize their lack of KCing and lack of looking for Legend of New York. If y'all can rationalize that for me, please do. I'd love to. This would make that chapter a 10 out of 10. I'm going to, I'm warning you, the chapter's probably going to get like a 9 because of, because of that. It, it is poorly con conceived writing. I, I'll admit it. It's one of the biggest issues I've had with this arc. Characters just ain't smart. And not even smart, basic function, right? Like, obviously, I'm a reader. I transcend this narrative. It is a piece of fiction. I am above it in every way, shape, and or form. So, like, obviously, I'm going to look at things from a more detached perspective because I'm literally not a gaping hole. I don't have a gaping hole in my chest. My stomach, my kid doesn't have a gaping hole in his stomach. I'm not reverted down to, I don't know, 14-year-old pencil. Like, I'm, like none, of, none of those things are happening to me. But... Even, like, these characters can't be this dumb. Based on how they've been established, these characters can't be this dumb. But, with that being the case, we see that is actually a little bit excited. They're like, why don't we bring it up with Hendrickson? And I love this detail here where King is like, oh, Hendrickson. <laughs> like, all, like, all the experiences with Hendrickson never... <laughs> like, they never faded away. And, like, think about King's lifespan. Hendrickson was, like, a bad person in King's life for, what, two months? Did not matter. <laughs> Hendrickson left that much of a negative mark on King. I do love that detail. But we see, as Nassim's all excited, do you know him? He's a famed doctor over in Leonis. King just has a look of, like, oh, I know him. Oh, do I know him. <laughs> the negativity in King's soul. I respect it. I respect it. I can't. Hendrickson was not the best of people. I think that's pretty odd, but like, Henry was not, 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 not the best of people. But, with that being the case, 
we see that Nazians goes to run off. And they're like, let me handle that, okay? I'll just run over to Leonis and... <laughs> Bang, bang, bang. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Five shots. Bang, bang, bang. <gasps> Nazians! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, bah! Would you look at that? The person who you didn't decide to KC rose up. Hey, hey. I figured I'd try and use it. And wow. I'll admit, I hope, really, just considering she's going to have a panel that makes her look a lot like the character I'm about to mention, I really hope this isn't just like a power swap of Merlin playing, I don't know, like, super duper disguise. I really hope this is just another Survivor Billy Halloween. I really, 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 really like Worlding. I'm not lying. We're trying to deny it. I won't hide it. Nah, I just, I really love Worlding. I think they are, next to Pelgar, definitively my favorite. Chaos Knight. And as an antagonist, better than Pelgar. I'll, I'll say it. Don't get me wrong, I love Ironside. And like, logistically speaking, based on Ironside's connections to Percival and Anne and Donnie, like, definitely overall, Ironside's the more impactful antagonist. He literally kickstarts the plot as we know it. We would not have the plot without Ironside going out when he did. But, with that being the case, in terms of how they're portrayed as an antagonist, how they're portrayed as a combatant, their playful personality, everything... World is my favorite. Oh, I just realized something. I hope that we will be big chilling to you. Please do. As I just looked and I, I realized something now. Oopsie daisy. You know, it's already too late. I'm going to gamble it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a coin toss. But let's see. How dare you? Shock sting. Boom! She drops one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine shock stings. One for every individual here. Diane, right through the nip. King, right through the nip. Tori, right through the nip. <laughs> Myrtle right through the nip Belt right through the nip Zillion right through the nip Pal right through the nip I don't know what it was I don't know why World Day was so pointed Like it's all straight through the nip All of them, all of them Every last one of them Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine. All, all of them Just boomed Straight through the nip And they all get one shot Dropped just like that I really was about to die you know, just now, you know? I still had a last resort, mind you. But I wanted to test the La Droga de Or too, so it worked out. Too bad there's just one dose left. <laughs> Devious. Diabolical. Unfortunate. But it'd really be like that. Wouldn't it be like that? Especially would it be like that? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know the crazy thing about this once again the character the character guy in me you know there, there are actually three parts of me at war earlier I mentioned the parts of me that were at war I mentioned the scaler in me and the character guy in me there are three parts of me that are at war right now there's the character guy in me there's the power scaler in me and there's the secret lesser side usually this guy doesn't come up mainly because I'm not a writer the narrative guy in me for the one who's screaming at the top of his lungs and hype and worry and confusion, but mostly hype, because once again, the verse just kind of gets upscaled weirdly. Yeah, Diane gets one shot. Admittedly by Shock Sting, which we know is a powerful spell. This is what immediately subdued, you know, Assault Mode Meliodas. Admittedly a heavily fatigued Assault Mode Meliodas, but hey, hey, still subdued him. Eh, that's pretty important. Yo. Diane, unless I'm mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe she was also in base throughout the majority of that movie, and that movie takes place 17 years ago in the timeline at this point. Curse by Light. Diane kind of face tanks God's Lightning from the Supreme Deity. Now, of course, that God's Lightning 
is one, a broad scale attack that was being used on multiple sins at once, two, from a half power supreme deity, and three, was nowhere near, once again, as targeted as the shock sitting straight through the nip. But, y'all, like, I'm, and once again, I'm not no professional scaler, far from it, but Diane getting one shot by Shock Sting after she's been healed by her baby and after she took relatively minimal damage from Myrtle, if we're being real, doesn't that put World Dane's, like, at least spell efficacy on the level of the deities? Like, is, is, that, cra is that crazy for me to say? Like, from tanking the Spirit Spear with admittedly very lethal damage, don't get me wrong, they literally say they were about to perish, but from tanking the true, true Spirit Spear from a King and Nansian's combo to one-shotting Diane post-cursed by light, like, World Ain't's clear, like, she has to be deities here, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not crazy for, I'm not crazy for saying that, right? Like, like, she just has to be above. She has to be built different, right? Right? Like, I, like, I can't be nuts for this. And if so, Gwen, you got a long way to climb. Weren't you struggling with the commandment? Like, like, I don't know, we in, we in rough waters right now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's crazy. But, once again, the scalar man in me is kind of freaking and geeking, because that means, hey, we have a character who, at least magical potency-wise, is clearly on the level of the deities. Any knight who happens to scale to the... Obviously, Lancelot's already up on or above the half-deity level, but, you know, if... Gawain ends up scaling the world Dane, which is definitely going to happen. That's their matchup. You know, we're going to have Gawain above the deities. You know, if Percival ends up fighting world Dane and does something to him, obviously that's going to put Percival on the tier of the half-power deities. You know, if Tristan does anything to the world Dane, that's going to put... Once again, it's kind of just like a universal upscale. And like, hey, the more characters who scale the planetary, I ain't going to play. But with it being the case... The other part of me, the character slash story guy in me is like, darn, Diane. You are not beating the fault or allegations. Like, don't get me wrong. I get why she has to be dropped here. And I ultimately get why she plays a less combat heavy role in this arc as a whole. Because that's kind of been Diane's whole character, sadly enough. She very rarely, outside of like Mother Catastrophe, and I think that's it. Like, who else does... What other big combat moments does Diane have outside of Mother Catastrophe? I'd say Mother Creation, but that doesn't even do any damage to the Demon King. She basically just sets the groundwork for that fight, and then Escanor immediately gets his moment right after that with the one. What, the troll fight? Not really. Yeah, Diane really doesn't have much in terms of combat. She's always been a character for other characters' sake. So while I do love her moment in this arc with Myrtle and being Mama of the Year... Like, she still is one of the Seven Deadly Sins. She still is supposed to be, like, this top-tier, high-level combatant. So, for her first time to actively get active in this arc, to have her immediately be one-shot, and not just one-shot, but hypothetically lethally one-shot, by one attack from a Chaos Knight? Yeah, sure. The scaling part of me is doing a jig, but the character part of me that wants Diane to be taken seriously is like, darn. You're kind of trash, G. Couldn't dodge that. Couldn't react to it. Couldn't knock it away. Not, it didn't, it didn't put up any sort of fight. I can give King a pass. King has burned through a whole bunch of his magic and is currently massively nerfed. Presumably. At least in terms of like maybe reactions stuff like that just by the lesser body. Diane, what's your excuse? Fully healed and barely did anything today. That's sad. Also, the story guy in me. Once again, the story guy in me is the most like calm <laughs> the power scaler me and the character guy in me are screaming at the top of their lungs the story guy in me is like i get it because there's a reason this needs to happen now y'all read the chapter of the title y'all know knock has been itching scratching and feeding for it y'all know what time it is because nasian still stands <laughs> obviously coughing up some lungs and we see world End being like oh you're still alive i gave you a few extra shots Back shots for all the trouble you gave me, too. Well, fine, then. I'll spot you just one more blast. Once again, I love World Dane. I don't know. Something about, something about their demeanor works a lot for me. And it, I know that sounds so hypocritical for anyone who knows me and has been around for a while. Y'all know I'm not the biggest fan of Merlin. Like, 
literally my least favorite scent. But, and she definitely has a similar esque personality to this, but I don't know. I feel like Worldane's showmanship and playfulness is depicted a lot better than Merlin's, even though, like I said earlier, this legit just looks like Merlin with white hair. Fine, iron bars. So, like, I'm expecting her to have some sort of relation. But the most relation I'd want between Worldane and Merlin, I don't want this to just be, like, a Merlin alt or, like, a Merlin puppet or anything like that. I do want this to be just another survivor of Billy Halloween that went off to do their own thing and did something similar to Merlin using some means of metric but didn't, like, isn't just, like, Merlin herself. Though, admittedly, to be a survivor of Beliolowin, she would have to be extremely ancient and have a whole bunch of magic. But we know the time magic, Chrono Coffin, and whatever variation of it Merlin casts on herself is plausible. You could do it. We just don't know how. But, with that being the case, we see that Nasian stands. The pulse in my heart has stopped. Is this death? I die. Will I get to meet you? I never managed to wake you up. I couldn't find a single lead, even. I couldn't become a famous pharmacist. I couldn't defeat King Arthur of Camelot. And now I fall in pathetic fashion. Please forgive me. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Why do you think I went away anyway? It's because I didn't want you and my friends to get hurt. And now you're going to die in a place like this? That'll never happen on my watch. Huh? Oh. <laughs> but I'm the one who needs to apologize. That was selfish of me. You all believed in me, but I left you behind. So you don't have to forgive me, okay? Just let me fight with you. One more time. Wait. Where did you come from? Who are you? Percival has returned. Slang and raw, bro. Put some pants. You can't make hope pants? Hope magic pants? Like, dog. I mean, I, I, the ones again, the angles were working. And I, and I see that mystical magical hair. But dog, cover it up. I know you're 18 now. Don't matter, bro. Put, put some pants on, my G. Nazis, give him the coat. But, yes, Percival has returned. And I'll admit... Actually, you know what? Before I get into what I feel about Percival returning, I'm not going to say this soon, because once again, Nagwa did a much better job of holding off than he did last time. Meliodas was, like, gone for 10 chapters. Percival was gone for at least, like, I think 30. But, with it being the case, let's review this little speech here. One, I do like the fact that Nasian's even in death, still feels hope. Hope that he'll see Percival again. Even if it is from a, like, a lack of autonomy and feeling bad about the fact that ultimately he's technically failing in a way, at least in their own mind, that they let Percival down, they didn't do anything that they really wanted to, and ultimately they were going to perish, they still have hope, or at least the desire to see Percival. No matter what, Nasians at least never really built up any animosity towards Percival for abandoning them, and that is sweet. But also, I like how Percival rises to this. Once again, even if I do believe it's heavily based on CIS, a bunch of character induced stupidity, but with it being the case, I do like that this is what brings Percival back. None of the let the draw guys, none of the special treatments, none of being there. No, it's his friends being in danger. The hypothetical breaking of his promise. Since he was close enough by close. That's not how that English sentence was going at all. But since he was close enough, since he could feel it, since his spirit was called for, since everything was already there, the moment he felt one of his friends fading, coming to join him, he immediately got up and returned to them. And I do like how ultimately he feels and understands that, yeah, there probably is going to be some animosity and that person does need to apologize because that decision in a way was selfish. Instead of standing to fight alongside his friends, he abandoned them, every last one of them. And still, now he wants to atone for that by coming back and fighting for them. Once again, I do think Nasian's having the black hair works well for the contrast of Percival's fingers here, but Nasian, not Nasian's, Nagaba, draw the updated hair. Don't play with me, my friend. I know your truth. But with it being the case, Percival has returned and he's going to fight against Worldane. Now, one thing I will admit, I'm happy to have Percival back. Don't get me wrong, I love Percival. I think he's a great main character. Well, why why they come out like that? I think Percival is a great main character, so I'm more than happy to have them back. I will admit, though, 
I did kind of want to see a bit more of the world without Percival, and we still definitely are going to get that to some certain degree. We're going to see Lance, we're going to see Tristan, we're going to see Isold, we're going to see Kion, we're going to see Mel, we're going to see Zell and Gal, maybe not, we may not see them. The way Nakba did them in their own arc, maybe we won't see them, but... All that aside, I hope we get to see them, considering this was basically their baby boy, since I guess they can't have baby boys or baby girls. But with that being the case, I do kind of wish we got to see more perspectives. I kind of wanted to see what Lance was doing without Percival. I kind of wanted to see what Tristan was doing without Percival and how Tristan especially felt about Percival abandoning them. I kind of wanted to see how Gawain felt in the long run over two years. Like, there were more perspectives I wanted to see before we got to this point. But we can still sort of have that later on, which is why I'm still fine with him coming back now. And of course, we're going to get World Dane versus Percival. That's going to be intriguing. And obviously, there's the potential for Nazis to still get Love the Droga Dior. That's the thing. While giving Nazis Love the Droga Dior is going to be a massive buff, Percival's already stupid cracked with their massive buff. And I think Nazis could definitely use it to keep up still if Nazis is going to be allowed to be a factor of the main plot. And I think it's very particular that World Dane admits there's still one dose left. Ultimately, they didn't slurp it all up. There is one dose. One dose for Nazis to consume and then be able to produce all the drug they are infinitely, at least presumably, unless that dose is going to be spirited away to Camelot. But I don't know. I smell a certain something, something. But overall... Ooh, clean. Very clean. A W chapter. A W chapter. Once again, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I think it's Percival's return chapter. I really, like, it is it is legitimately a 10 out of 10, if not an 11 out of 10. But I really, I really can't excuse the CIS. Once again, it can easily be boosted back up to a 10 or an 11 out of 10 for Percival's return, for the characterization of World Dane, World for the interactions between father and child, mother and children, like, all that. Like, this chapter is still really, really good. It's some of Nakaba's greatest work in terms of character writing and character internal conflicts and stuff like that. I love it. I love it. But it's just, it's just, a, it's the CIS, bro. I can't get over the CIS. But that aside, if you made it all the way to the end of this chunker of a video, please, do me a favor and leave The New Hope. Leave The New Hope in the comment section down below. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure that little the case bell so you not miss out on any of the of the channel. Also, also, I do have to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as well as one. Count them one. Now, monthly continues like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as well as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. So, all those perks will include the 20 minute live reaction to this very chapter, add free variations of all my videos, and if you become a $25 patron, you're a $25, whoa, a $25 member, you can order whatever video you want. Also, 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 I do have a link to my Ko-Fi in the description down below where you can drop 5 beans for a short video, 25 beans for a long video. Any support at all is always appreciated. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Girl the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members of Kinda Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, King Sukuna, NMA, Real Rare, Paris Arnold, G Prosper, and Red Wolf 4765. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $5 patrons, Steron, Sean, Sammy, Midnight Lord 21 Kevin Encarnacion, Josh Brown, and A plus A. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $7 patrons, Autumn Mornings Lazo, and Fine. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $10 members, Robbie Uchia and Jay Warrior. And I'd like to give another thank you to our $10 patrons, Panda Goat, Metal Solid Crisis, Joaquin Munoz, and Joaquin Munoz, along with iDemoKami. And I'd like to give a final gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.